time, let us read our responsive psalm, Psalm 89, verses 9 to 18. Actually, I think we're starting. Just a minute. I think, it's, I, think I didn't get that one changed. Hold on. Uh, I got Carol with me. I think we're starting at 19. Uh, and going to 34. that we don't have to be perfect to be used 
used by God. If you want to hit the slide, Lyle. This plaque is on the wall of the St. Andrew's Care. Do you seriously think God can't use you? Do you know that Noah was so sick of being on the ark for so long, one day he just got drunk? Abraham, 100-year-old people and 90-year-old women can't have babies. They did. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. And Jacob did not want to marry Leah. She was ugly. You remember the story? Apparently she was veiled and he married her instead of his sister. And so he made a deal with the father that he married his sister. So he had two wives. I always kept that in order. I don't know. But he had two wives. And he had to work another seven years to be able to uh, marry. What a dowry. Yeah. Joseph was not in her. Leah was not in her. Jacob was not in uh, a uh, hero, yay. <laughs> Joseph gets himself sold into slavery. We just went through all that story. Right now, Moses had a speaking or a stuttering problem. Gideon was afraid. Samson had long hair and was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. David had an affair and murdered somebody. Elijah was suicidal. I don't remember this part where Isaiah preached naked. i got to look that one up. That's the only one I don't know. But, but Jonah didn't run from God. Now, I hope he was a widow. Je Job went bankrupt. Peter denied Jesus. The disciples fell asleep while praying. Martha was worried about everything. Samaritan woman was divorced. Zacchaeus was too short. And Paul was too religious. And Timothy had an ulcer. What a mess. God chose those people. Listen, the moment you think God can't use you, well, let's look at the people and collection of crazy people in the Bible God can use. And it's not because we are so good or so bad. It's because God is so good. I mean, think about this. Moses is ready to give up. But God comes back and encourages him and said, hey, I will deliver the people. So how do we live in this time between a promise given by God or a situation that needs God's help and we pray about it and before we get an answer or find out what's going to happen, it's called living by faith. So this past week I went to a workshop. The workshop was entitled The March Event of the Grain Farmers of Ontario. So why was the Reverend Jim Green going to a Grain Farmers Association meeting? Because Burke McKinley invited me. And anybody notice that the technology in farming has changed a little bit? If I'm going to be able to be a good pastor and minister to a bunch of people in agriculture, and I worked in agriculture, remember, as a student, and grew up on a farm, I need to know what the heck's going on. So every once in a while, I go to workshops. So I have Chuck and Heather Beresich there. And one of the people we had speak talking about rural stress was, a lot of you want to hit the next slide, a lady by the name of Jennifer Moss of Plasticity Labs. She's a student of dealing with, well, happiness, actually. She works at the University of Guelph, and she is hired to deal with the kind of stress that comes from agriculture. But you know the kind of stress? Your entire year's income is on the line, and it's raining, and it might not come off. That kind of stress. And she told a really interesting story that I think links with Moses' story. And how it applies to Moses is that sometimes we just need to try and trust God even though we don't seem to have the strength in our own to do it. And so what this lady talked about was something called mirror neurons. Apparently mirror neurons were discovered in the brain in the late 1990s. And it's kind of a... a it's, it means that we mirror or imitate behaviors around us, like children. So I'm going to show you a little video, but I'm going to tell you a story while I'm showing you a little video, because the law can't be two places at once. So my niece, see where it says watch a movie. So my niece is going to be, uh, Vanessa has a daughter named uh, Charlotte. Charlotte. Uh, was visiting Grandma and Grandma. Is it started? Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Stop. Okay, we'll get to that in Charlotte was visiting Grandma and Grandma, and Grandma has much really this to be, so we put us uh, up and down the stairs. We put it in a ramp. On a, on a, on a, on a chair. So 
We said she has watched Graham be used it enough. Before she's good no. in June 5th. I guess go. In June oh, 5th, she will be two years old. She climbed up the step, couldn't get on the chair, climbed up to the third step, folded the chair down, climbed up on it, fastened the seatbelt, hit the button, and rode it all the way up. At which point Dan said, I can't get her now. Because he was in the basement, so he called his wife, Kathy, on the phone upstairs, and they rescued her. But she apparently has mirror neurons that learn from watching what other people do. This is an old candy camera video style that illustrates that. And it's dark. These folks who are entering a man with a white shirt go in with a trench coat. And subsequently, one other member of our staff will face the ring. So they're in the elevator. And you'll see how this man in the trench coat. <laughs> So many people go, oh, you don't need to believe in God. God doesn't exist. How can we know? 